So what's up my sexy PewTubers? Welcome back. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. So we are gonna be doing the Polymer 80 PF940 SC Glock 26 build number three actually. We already did a couple of builds in the past. We've done one that was more of the OEM style with just a standard texture on there and an OEM slide, all in OEM internals, everything. After that, we did a more custom one with a gray frame, a more custom slide with an RMR cut and you know, nicer barrel and trigger all that crazy stuff. If you haven't seen those videos um, in the past, I will put a playlist in the description below. But today we're gonna be doing one a little bit more extreme. Um, this one's gonna be the tactical everyday carry one. I know that doesn't really quite make sense, but I guess what makes it tactical is we got a cool little light on it. We also have a threaded barrel on here. We got some really nice orange front sights. Uh, mag extensions and custom stippling. Um, I will have a full build list for you guys. I will put a link to that down in the description below. It will be the first link in the description. I'll also have a list for all the tools that I'm using. That way, if that's something you wanna check out, you know, you can pick that up. Anyways, let's dive up close. Let's take a look at this bad boy up close and personal in all its glory. Um, we're gonna go over what my final impressions are of the Polymer 80 Glock 26 PF940SC. Being that this is the third build that we've done, I think I'm pretty qualified now to give you guys my final review of the Glock 26. All right, guys, so here we are up close with the Polymer 80 Glock 26 build that we're gonna be doing today. Got it separated into a bunch of different parts. If you're watching this on YouTube, there won't be a tutorial in here. So just check down in the description and you'll find the links to the tutorial. But if you're watching this on any other video platform like Full30 or Gunstreamer or Facebook, wherever, the tutorial will be here for you. But we're just gonna go over some of the parts real quick that I'm using as well as the tools just for those of you who are new to doing Polymer 80 builds. So let's just jump into it. We're gonna talk about the frame and the slide first. We have this new slide right here from Legion Precision. This is, I forgot the name of this slide. You can get it with or without his logo on the plate, I believe. It's got some nice front cocking serrations right here, a little bit on the top there. And then on the back, you have the same slanted cocking serrations. Now this one is in sniper gray. For those of you who don't know, this is pretty much my favorite Cerakote color of all time. I installed the night fission sights on here. It's got the orange front and the blacked out rear with tritium inserts. Um, I do have a full video on how to install sights properly on the Glock slides. So if you want to check out that video, I highly recommend it, but I will be putting um, links to all the parts and the tools and accessories that we're going to be using in this video. For the sight pushers, um, I find that this is hand down the easiest sight pusher in the world to use when it comes to Glocks. Um, these are a little bit pricey, but if you've ever done more than one build, they will definitely pay for themselves. But the time that they save you will just pay itself off really quick. So I use this one, this is the MGW. I'll have a link for that below. On the frame, this is a Polymer 80 frame that was actually customized by our friend over at Exhale Weapon Works. I believe I have a coupon code for him, but guys, you gotta understand, this dude is backed up. He only does Polymer 80 and SIG frames. Anything that's non-serialized, that's what he works on. He did this one for Legion Precision. He put their little logo right here on it to match you know, the logo that they have on their slide here. So that's pretty awesome. So we got some nice little stippling going on. I am gonna sand this down just a little bit just because there's some high spots, um, but I'll show you that here in a second. And we also got this nice little thumb groove. He actually took more out from underneath here on the undercut, beveled it out some more and put some stippling on the bottom as well as on the front right here. That's awesome. That's the frame we're gonna be using. Put that back into the jig. Next up for parts, we are going to be using this Blacklist Industries threaded barrel. I've actually had this barrel for quite a while. I got it last year and I've actually ran comps on it and everything. I do have a coupon code for Blacklist Industries. I'm not affiliated with those guys. Um, they are just cool enough to always provide coupon codes and some of the barrels and stuff like that whenever I need them. It's the same as pretty much any other match grade barrel that they make for Glocks. It's 416R stainless steel, one in 10 twist rate, semi spec chamberings, and this one is in the black nitride. So we're going to be using in that. For the trigger, we're actually going to be using the SSVI Glock trigger. I've done a review on this one in the past. Um, this one's in the red, but there is tons of colors for these. I also have coupon codes for these, so make sure you check down below for that. Also got a minus connector in here. That's pretty much it for the trigger. Um, for connectors, I always go with minus connectors. They seem to be the most consistent for the type of builds that I do. Some people may disagree, but I 100% love them. So that's what we're using for the trigger system. For the parts kit, I have this titanium nitrate 
try to strike her and I, I'm super embarrassed to say this, but I forgot who sent this to me. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like an ass, but yeah, we got this one. I will search for the link and put it down below if I can find it. We also are going to have some other parts in here, like this nice billet extractor. This really helps with um, extraction issues with the Gen 3s because the polymer 80 is based on the Gen 3 parts. A lot of times when people were doing the builds, they were finding they were getting erratic ejections. This solves all those problems. Then we got our standard OEM Glock parts kit down here. Now, one interesting thing about the Glock 26 in particular with Glock, and this doesn't apply to any of, of the other Glock models, the slides as well as the internals will swap back and forth between Gen 3 and Gen 4. The main things that won't switch over are this trigger housing, right here in my right hand we have the gen 3 in the left hand we have the gen 4 you can notice at the bottom the gen 4 is a lot more pointed thus they won't fit in the gen 3 frame and then also the mag release um, the gen 4s both sides of the mag release look like this so that won't swap over but everything else is fair game um, for the tools i'm going to be using this magnetic bench block right here from real avid um, i love this thing it has a little 1911 tool on it it's rubberized so it doesn't slip and it's magnetic on the bottom so so when you put your pins through, it will catch them. That's cool. Also, got to have these. A set of end snips will make your life so much easier and faster whenever you're doing a polymer 80 build. Just trust me on this. This is totally worth like the $8 that I paid for it. I'll have links for that below. Need a little bit of a file set. You're also going to need a hammer. This came with the Wheeler Hammer and Punch Kit that I purchased a long time ago. Going to be using a little WD-40 here. I'll show you why later. I got some 600 grit. Um, sandpaper, you can use 600 grit or 1000 grit, totally up to you. Also going to be using a little shooter lube. Um, this is a cleaner that I've been using. Um, it's a separate from cleaner and oil. I've been using this for over a year now. 100% recommend it, non-toxic, no smell. You could literally eat it. So I'll have coupon codes and links for this as well if that's something you want to check out. And then we're also going to be using this, uh, the Dremel. So any type of rotary tool will work. I just happen to have a Dremel here. Lastly, but not least, we're gonna be checking out this Vism tool right here. Now this thing's pretty cool. It's an all-in-one Glock tool. And what makes this tool just so freaking amazing is one, you got your typical punch, right? For hitting the frame pins out and everything like that. Also has a bottle opener right here. And then if you see this little switch right here, this pops out and it's got a little magnet that'll catch it when it goes back in. So you gotta be careful like if I, See how it catches it? So it won't just flop out on you. But what this does, so you take that in, you push it in, right? Now you just squeeze it and it pops your mag plates off. Super easy. Love that. The next reason I love this is this little portion right here. You can stick your, you can stick a striker in it, right? And for those of you that have ever done anything with strikers, um, usually we use the back of the slide to do it, but the back of the slide can be kind of wobbly, but this is what you use to depress your spring. And so you can pull out your spring cups and everything. So super awesome. And also you push this little button right here. Now we got a front sight tool. So honestly, I've, I've got a lot of different types of Glock tools, you know, including the standard plastic ones, but I've never seen one that has so many features like that one. And they're only like $15. And we're gonna be using a Ryobi drill to drill the holes. So let's get into the build and get this pig going. Theoretically, this gun should function. Let's check it. All right, so the slide is a little stiff. Let's see but we're getting function. Let's try that. Let's put some oil on it, get some shooter lube out, put some on these rails here. I always recommend this for any type of build. We're also gonna put some in the rails of the slide itself. You wanna use a little too much oil when you're doing these builds to make sure everything functions. So what it's looking like is happening is it wasn't catching on that lip. It's actually catching on the takedown lever because if I actually pull this lever down, it comes back. Now that's just gonna take a little breaking in. I've had that happen with other guns before, but we're getting no up and down play with this uh, barrel here. So you can see no play at all. I'm actually gonna slam it on the ground like this and see if it'll fail a drop safe. Hang on. Nope, so the drop safe is good. There it is in all its glory, the Glock 26. Looks pretty sexy to me. But anyways, let's jump up top real quick. Let's talk a little bit more about it. I think I'm in a place now where I can give you my final opinion on what I really think about these frames. 
back up top. So what do you guys think of the custom Glock 26, AKA tactical EDC build? I'm really digging it. You know, the Legion precision slide, it looks really nice. You know, obviously you guys know I love sniper gray and black. Those are my two favorite colors for guns. It just, it just works for me. I really like the top serrations that he has on the top of the slide, as well as how they wrap around even the chamfers um, right here. I like the fact that you can add a Trijicon RMR if you want to. Um, I have ran the Vortex Viper on my other Glock 26 a couple of years ago, and it ran just fine. Um, so you can do red dots on these. You know, as always, you know, I've done reviews for uh, XL Weapon Works in the past, but he did a bang out job on the stippling. I'm not really a big fan of like, cool designs and stuff in stippling. To me, it just doesn't fit my personality and what I like to do with stippling. But needless to say, he didn't do this for me. He did this for Legion Precision. He did a pretty darn good job stippling out his logo to match what's on the slide right here. The Blacklist Industries barrels, you know, I've had, I have two of their barrels. I have one for the 19 and the 26, and both of these are a couple of years old now, and they run like a champ. I really like these SSVI triggers. You know, I've done a review on this one in the past and I got it set up in a way that's just really nice um, with a minus connector. It's got a it's got a wall to it but you know it's one of those walls that I like. There are some walls I don't like. They just you hit a wall and you try to pull through it and it's like ugh, I hate it. But this one not a bad little wall there. Take up break reset break. Advertised as plus three mag extensions, but I'm able to get plus four into these mags. So 10 plus four, I can actually turn a standard Glock 26 into a 14 plus one capacity. So that's legit. The light, I'm not too sure how I feel about this light. Uh, there's basically one mode and that's on. It's 100 lumens. It's not bad though for this style of gun, for something that's just real quick and easy and concealable, you can just press out. I do like the paddles that come on here. They're very similar to the Enforce. You can index it here or you can hit it with your thumb on this side, which I really like. Um, the only downside to this is there's no momentary, which I, which I wish it had. But overall, just to kind of give you guys my final opinions about Polymer 80 PF940SC frames, I dig them. I really like them a lot. You know, even on the standard run of the mill Polymer 80 frames, you know, I like even here without that mag extension, you know, it has a nice little front lip on the front. So your, your two fingers don't feel like they're gonna slide off. So even without that, I can get my pinky up under here and I am dead nuts accurate with these things. When I press out, you know, and hitting targets and stuff like that, I always hit where I wanna hit. But for some reason, the gray, it just really does it for me the most. So if you're gonna get a Polymer 80 frame, you know, for the Glock 26, I definitely recommend the gray one. It's just my favorite color of all time. Like I said, I will put a build list, a link to the build list. And I'll also put a link for this light right here. These lights are really inexpensive. I think I paid $89 for it a, long, a while back and it works for what it is. Now, the downside is um, you're gonna have to have a custom holster made for it. And I don't know how many holster makers have a mold for this. So it might be great for like a nightstand type gun. Um, the night fission sights, I did a review on these sights back in February of this year. And I love all the options that they have for these. They have uh, tons of different options. You can get a U-notch, you can get a squared off notch, you can get a blacked out rear, you can get tritium rear, green front, orange front, blacked out front. I mean, they got a ton of different options. I'm just gonna be really honest with you, unless Polymer 80 comes out with a new frame, which I hear they are, this will probably be our last Polymer 80 build. Like I'm just getting like Polymer 80'd out. I'm still gonna do like reviews on parts and stuff, but who knows? We'll see what the future holds. I haven't 100% decided yet. So until something else comes out like the PF940 CL, which is gonna be the 17 size slide with the 19 grip, which is basically the Glock 19X that everybody wanted. I just got a confirmation that they're shipping me one of those. So we will be doing a build for that. And then we're still waiting on the SS80 parts to come in. I don't know when that stuff's coming in, but it's coming guys. Don't worry, we will be doing a Glock 43 build. Oh, and for those of you wondering, if you have a Glock 43 or planning on doing a build, I just found custom aftermarket Glock 43 slides for $184.99 with coupon codes. I'll put a link below with all this cool stuff. But anyways, guys, until next time, you guys stay sexy. Subscribe to the channel if you like. I'd love to have you here. But until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.